Thanks, uh, Justin. Can you guys hear me all right? OK, great. Uh, by a show of hands, how many of you guys are a little bit sweaty? <laughs> OK, thank you. It's not just me. Uh, no, in, in actuality, uh, how many of you guys ride the bus? OK, some of you. Less than who are sweaty. Uh, how many of you guys would ride the bus if you knew when the bus was coming? Less of you. OK, got it. Uh, <laughs> Hi, I'm Matt, this is Jason, Lewis, uh, Richard at the computer, and Andrew. We are the MSP Bus team. So I'm gonna tell you about MSP Bus. Uh, so my name is Matt, I'm from Seattle. I just moved here. I used to ride the bus a lot in Seattle. And uh, they had a really, really good app in Seattle for figuring out when the bus was actually gonna come. If it was early or late or on time or whatever, they had a ton of different interfaces um, for you to figure that information out. So when I got here, I was riding the bus, and I was looking for that same app here from Minnesota, from Minneapolis and St. Paul, and I couldn't find it. I found that uh, the options that were available uh, were kind of lacking. Either they didn't have real-time data, or they had a bad user interface, or both. And so uh, we went to a hackathon uh, at the beginning of June, and that's where all of us met for the first time. And our goal at that, that weekend, that hackathon, was to build that, to build uh, a site that gives you real-time bus information in a, an easy-to-use web interface. So we're going to demo it. So for everybody out there, pull out your smartphones. The, web's, the web URL is mspbus.org. Uh, if you pull out your phone and fiddle with it, that's going to be a lot better than if you watch our demo. Uh, but we're going to show you the web interface and also the iOS interface. So you load the page, and if we have Wi-Fi, this will be awesome. We're still loading. How's it look? Um, OK, we have a video as a backup, too. This is not what they promised. OK. Um, right. What? OK, so if you guys pull out your phones, go to the site, msvbus.org. Uh, if you go to it on a website, you're going to have a different experience than if you're um, on your phone. Uh, if you're on your phone, it's going to be tailored to that small screen size. So we, we were really conscious about how much space everything takes up. Uh, this is what it looks like on the web. So it's going to ask you uh, to use your location. You say, find me. Uh, and this is also slow. I apologize. Uh, what happens after you say, find me, is it looks for your location. I was at 4th and 4th uh, when I was recording this video. And you can see on the left-hand side of the screen a list of bus stops near you. And those different color-coded blocks are buses. So you can see the direction the bus is going and how soon it's coming. And so we color coded it. So red means it's urgent, means you, you need to get out to the bus right now, less than five minutes. Uh, yellow means five to 12 minutes. Green means 12 to 20 minutes. And if it's blue, it means you should probably have another drink. You have a little bit of time. <laughs> uh, on the right hand side of the screen, we have the map too. And you can see that there's a lot of red dots. All those red dots are, are the actual bus stops. So you can click on a bus stop and you can see um, you can see the, uh, at the very top of the screen, I wonder if I actually clicked on it in the video, um, a little tooltip pops up and it tells you which buses are coming right now for that stop. Uh, from there, you click on the actual stop and you can go to the stop page where you can, you can bookmark this or whatever you want to do with it. Um, so you can access it, like if, if you live at 4th and 5th, which I don't know if anybody lives there, but uh, you can bookmark the page so you can get back to it easily. Uh, and so that is the web interface. I don't think we have a, a demo for the, uh, for the mobile version. Jason, you want to pull up your iPhone? Sure. Can you try it? So this ah. is what it looks like, but it's not actually going yes. to go because the Wi-Fi is broken. So as you can see on the uh, iPhone interface here, um, we're using responsive design to actually... Oh, oh is it working? Yes. Okay. Demo. Just time. kidding. It's live. Woo. All right. Oh, so, three minutes. Okay, so this is the, the iPhone interface. Uh, as you can see, you're not looking at the list in the map, you're just looking at the list. Uh, if you click on the map, you want to show me what the map looks like? Uh, so it says, it knows that we're at Aria, that we're right here. And so we can look at stops that are right nearby. Um, and so if you click on one of those, we'll see the, the bus, what we're calling chips, like the little icon that says the 60 is coming in four minutes, half a block away, so you got to run and catch the bus. Uh, so if we go from here to the stop page, we were really conscious of how much uh, space 
uh, we're using on the screen, so we tried not to waste any of it. So it looks kind of like an app. It's not exactly an app, but it's close. Uh, but that's the, the short of it. That's, that's our site. And so Jason's going to talk to you about the technical stuff. Great. Um, so the stops are actually available as uh, GTFS data, which is a general transit format um, specification, and um, that's publicly available. So we actually got all the stops, and we used Ruby on Rails to run a rake task to actually put them into the database, which is a Postgres database. So once we had it in the database, we thought, well, we have Latin lawn coordinates in the database, but now we need to actually get this um, to scale. And so we actually threw that into an Elasticsearch um, instance, and so and into an index. And that would give us a geo point, which would then be able to say whether we hit find me or if we did a search on the actual uh, address itself, um, that would give us a lat lawn back, which would then give us the distance on the right there, how far I am away from that stop. And we're never hitting the database because we're always hitting Elasticsearch, which is awesome. So it can scale if you know everyone starts using it. Well, today maybe not, but um, you know if everyone starts using it, theoretically we could scale horizontally and it would be awesome. Um, so great. Um, one minute. So basically, and then well, once we have the stops listed here, we do an async call using JavaScript with the backbone to go get the actual chip data from the real-time um, next trip API. So once we get that data, we populate the chips. So it's a mashup of those two things. So once we have those chips in there, those are real-time. They update every 60 seconds on here and on the stop page. So that's really great. Um, it's all responsive, as you can see. So the list and the map are there. Um, on the mobile site, but on the desktop site, it's you know expanded. So we're doing you know responsive design, and we built this basically in a weekend. So that's the technology. Okay. Hey, so where are we going to go next? Um, first of all, we're interested in the statistics on this. We have real-time data, and we also know from the GTFS data when the buses are supposed to arrive. And because we've got both of those, we can figure out, well, how late are the buses versus what the real-time data says they should be. This allows us to improve our statistics and give better representations when buses should be arriving. We're also looking next at expanding the number of services that we're offering. The GTFS data is available for 800 cities worldwide, so we're going to be expanding. Was that the cutoff? Okay, thanks everyone. One last big thanks to Minidemo for letting us present tonight. This is awesome.